Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf's weekly podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor and Connor. And today is the moment you've all been waiting for all year. The award players want to win the one, the only, the Grippies. Woo! The Grippies. Uh, the Grippies are presented to you by True Classic. Huge shout out to them for continuing to sponsor Grip Locked. Uh, we're going to start it off with a, an award that is, uh, you know, I think one that everyone is expecting to come. Is very exciting, very pretty well contended. If I'm being completely honest yeah, with you, very well contended. Fire Fest of the year. Mm. Um, we have a few nominees here. Uh, the first nominee is the most recent to happen: the Big Money Skins match out in the uh, St. Louis, Missouri area. Mm-hmm. Second one is also semi recent. We have the PDGA survey that was sent out to all the members. Uh, next one, you had to go a little bit farther back into your minds for the Elaine King rule call on Chris and Tatar's daughter. Through the commentary booth. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> and the final one, uh, you know, this one might come with a little pushback, but I think it's a fair to be nominated. The Fierce documentary that mm. people paid to make happen and then had to pay again to watch. Yep. Yep. I will. I think the I think the Fierce documentary could come off the list if it hits Netflix. Mm. I I agree with that. Would you, I think we could all agree. If the yeah. Fierce documentary gets on Netflix, we're willing to remove the nominee for Fire mm-hmm. Fest of the Year. Yep. Sure. Um. You know, we've talked about all these on Grip Locked multiple different times, except for the Big Money Skins match, um, which we'll talk about in today's episode as we go over these. But and you know what? I think it's a, we'll go ahead and announce the Fire Fest of the year because it is the Big Money Skins match, mm. mainly because uh, it was hyped up all year. Yeah, the first ever Grippy, the first ever first Grippy ever... went to the Big Money Skins match. <laughs> That's a historic so, moment. That's big for them. That's big for them. Uh, we'll get their mailing address and send them the send them I the award. wish I wish way more now that I had bought the merch. I'm worried now yeah. that if I did buy it, there was merch. Yeah, and it literally was just like a black shirt mm, that just said that been great. like Big Money great. Skins match. And like now I know that I didn't know if it would be cemented into fame like it was. I suspected, but I didn't know. But I didn't yeah. pull the trigger. Well, so should we give them a Grippy or should we give them a Slippy? They get a grippy. Um, <laughs> so what ended up happening, if you didn't pay attention to this past weekend, it was is glorious. all year it had been kind of hyped up coming. The winner was getting $50,000, over $100,000 in prizes going out. Huge event. Tons of money on the line, tons of money on the table at Eagles Crossing. You know, it's been hyped up as one of the best disc golf courses in the world. All of this. About a week before, out of nowhere, uh, fans at home are told it's going to be fifteen dollar pay per view to watch it live. Heck yeah. Not even really pay per view because one of the options was you could subscribe to GK Pro's YouTube channel, but it's a monthly subscription for fifteen dollars, which means not really pay per view because you have to remember to cancel, or else mm. you'll just be charged. So reminder, by the so way, really a subscription. Make sure you cancel. Um, but yeah, so that was like a subscription, or you could go on LiveDiscGolf.net, which was a fire this, website. This was the first. This is what made me tweet. I have a weird feeling. Is when you went to the Big Money Skins website, there was four different links, and each link took you to a different website that all looked like they were built in 2002. Okay. None of them were well built out cutting websites. Edge. None so of them kind of sounds like disc golf for mobile. It's cutting edge. Uh, and so each one took you to a different website. Now, you would think it'd just be like BigMoneySkins.com mm-hmm. and like oh live disc golf tab, uh, you know vote for my players tab, yeah. watch in person tab. No, each yeah. thing was different. One was even just supportdiscgolf.com. But it was basically you got to like pick a player and buy some discs and money went to the player. Interesting. Uh, so okay. that yeah. was some red flags started going up. I'm like, something's <clears> off about this. Also, the live disc golf.net on it. They said they laid down miles of video cable. They promised a satellite quality production. They had hired a professional sports broadcasting That's team. Wow. I believe it was Mason Productions. Um, that just that was their expertise was live sports broadcasting. They hired a professional commentator. Mm. What does that mean? Who knows? Turns out it was just someone who didn't know anything about disc golf. Uh, <laughs> so funny. And so, but all you had to do was start doing some a little bit of Googling. Just type in Mason Productions and you can't find them anywhere. You find mm. a bunch of Mason Productions, but none of them say live sports broadcasting anywhere on it. So then you're like, huh, that's interesting. Um, then you start Googling a few other things. You find some other things. Won't get into too much of it. Um, but there was reasons I tweeted. I think this, like, this could be, we might be in for a show. Uh, then the first... You know, post that went up on Facebook was Friday because people paid $15 ready to watch them disc golf yeah. only to find out that Friday wasn't actually live broadcasted. Mm-hmm. Didn't oh. see that advertised before. Oh. So there's a lot of posts being like, hey, what the heck's going on Friday? Like, oh, it's the seating match. Seating match yeah. not being broadcast. I just broadcasted. saw, I saw like Scott Stokely post about the match and I was like, oh, 
It, what the heck? That's the other thing. I hope players are being held accountable slightly because a lot of players posted, pretty much every player in it, posted, and they were driving traffic, be like, hey, you want to watch this? You want to watch this? So they're getting their fans to pay $15 for something that clearly no one vetted. Mm-hmm. Because, like, true, it was a crap show. Like it, Because then Saturday comes around. Live broadcast supposed to start at 7.30 a.m. Central. Got pushed back to 8.30 because technical issues. Then, like, the first two hours of the broadcast, I didn't pay for this thing. I was running a tournament. First, like, two hours of the broadcast, I was told, had, like, no audio. Yeah, you Then can eventually, watch by like two o'clock, they randomly make the decision. And I want to talk to whoever made this decision because I want to know what they were thinking. They made it free to the public. Well, I think they they were probably what? just getting enough pushback that they're like, we can't. What? They probably but, refunded. But here's people. the thing. Here's the thing. Is if it's fifteen dollars, you're keeping it sheltered. You know, maybe there's a thousand well, no, people that paid for well, no, it. No, I'm thinking they. It probably means that they refunded people. That's fine. That's fine. Refund people and don't let anyone see this thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> Why do they make it free to the public is what I'm like, saying. Like, so that we could because all just now, bash it. It's like 1,000 people or whatever paid $15. Uh-huh. Let's say it's 2,000 people. It stays, it's a controlled group. Right. And you have to just listen to what they said. True. Mm-hmm. Instead, they were like, hey, this is going so great, so great, that we're going to make it free to the public. So I got to watch it. And, you know, I think I do have an audio clip here that I would like to play. I, I, I know it was, it was bad because I skipped around on it. And everywhere that I skipped, like something new. I was have happening. not heard anything of this. I was off the grid for the weekend, so it I have so not heard anything Connor, about this. It was Connor, Connor, very Connor, excited. It was mind blowing. Right, I let can't me, wait. Let to me watch play it. you a little. Let me make sure I'm not on Bluetooth here. I typically am. Let me play you a little <laughs> audio am. clip. This is uh, this was my. I tuned in. Okay. And this was my first experience of the big money skits. <laughs> I, I can't, can't wait, wait for you to experience this. Okay. That's not the that's not the mic peaking on our end. That was the audio of Luke Humphreys announcing. I believe it was Ezra no. Isaacson. I don't know who knows who knows no who he's announcing. No way. So there was that, and then it was constantly the camera would go out to like literally like lines on the screen because they just weren't getting the miles what? of video cable must have been from Walmart or <laughs> something. And then they would cut back to Big Germ was one of the commentators, and the other guy literally multiple times like. Now, I looked at the Disc Golf Wikipedia page, and I saw that it, it kind of came from Whammo. What? And then at one point, he was like, you know, I used to play with this sport with a peach basket. And then, you know, just like James Naismith back in the day. And Jeremy was like, you're speaking to the wrong sport, man. That's basketball. And like he... he He's probably like a local high school he like, like at sports broadcast. I don't know if it was better or worse, but he didn't try to... Act, like, he had a good voice. Uh-huh. But he, did, he didn't try to act like he knew Disc Golf. How could so you I don't tell know, he had a good voice? I, well, that's a good point. <laughs> But uh, no, their audio came through okay. Also, okay. they were cheaply on a green screen. Oh, the set was oh, so. So like, no. when you first tune in, you're like, like, oh, they're they're, they're in like a, a weird new set, and then he would like move, and his hair would pixelate. You'd be like, oh, oh no, he's, he's in front of a green screen. Pretty odd. It took you two seconds to be like, yeah, it's a green. The screen. The funny thing that is, though, you know, Big Germ got the bag for that comment. I'm sure he did. Mm-hmm. But like, there is something that players are gonna have to start asking themselves as stuff rolls in disc golf. What do you want your name tied to? Right. Because like when I think yeah. of the remember the American Disc Golf Tour presented by Salient had the Hooters girls carrying the scorecard. It was just an absolute crap crazy. show back in the day. That was crazy. Only thing I remember about that is that Ricky played. Mm. So I I like that I remember Ricky dog. being tied to that event. That's Dang. that's like the big it, thing I remember about it. Because Ricky decided to play when like I believe Paul said no. Like I can tell this is like no, I'm not doing this thing. I'm not playing. Also, don't think Paul played this weekend. Mm-mm. Yeah, there's something also. When that whole prodigy stuff was going on a long, long, long time ago, Paul's got a good nose for this stuff. Now that I'm thinking back about well, it, well, I don't Boy's think got a good nose. I don't think you need to have a good nose for it. I think you just have to be like. I think a lot of these players probably knew what they were getting into, but you had a chance to win fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, well, I think that's you're not. So you're probably not like, going to hear complaints from the pros. Yeah, pretty Either tough. it was ran well on the grounds. What I've well, heard is that's it, not true. It wasn't. <laughs> but you're not going to hear it because like. You did have a shot of fifty thousand dollars, and I'm sure every pro that was there was like, it wasn't bad enough for me not to go back for fifty grand. Right. Mm. Uh, the other thing that we have to like take a step back and look at is motives behind. We've heard Eagles Crossing refuses to allow signage on their course, so the Pro Tour World Championship probably not going to be there. Mm. Stuff like that. Uh, they they don't really seem like they want to work with established organizations in disc golf, such as the PDGA, the Pro Tour, to have big events out there. Yeah. So. In the grand scheme of disc golf, this event where it did like some, I won't say who won because I don't think, I don't want to spoil it, but someone won $50,000 uh-huh. because it wasn't, the Sunday wasn't broadcasted live. 
Even if it was, you wouldn't have seen. Dang. Um, someone won fifty thousand dollars, which is the most I believe someone's won at a single event in disc golf history. But you do have to. Was question, the last round supposed to be broadcasted? Yeah, they stopped it because of what happened Saturday, and so it's gonna be post produced by GK Pro. Should come out today. Oh my god. Um, mess. The whole thing also, should have been post produced. GK Pro was defending Mason Productions leading up to it, and they were part of what was hyping it up. So GK Pro just should be held accountable slightly too. Mm. Like let's all. You know, I don't know what they, they were probably being fed information about how good these people were. Yeah. Someone was lying somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. Also, another red flag that I forgot to mention is like two days before the event, this Mason Productions person was posting in all the local groups asking for volunteers to like help run cable, operate different things for the broadcast, all of this. And it's like, if you're a live sports production company, yeah. you have people whose job yeah. is doing that. You're mm -hmm. not look, like one was literally like, if your teenager wants, they can get access $150 worth of all access passes to come operate the event. And it's like, are they getting all access passes or yeah. are they operating the event? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, right. they were saying they get it for free. It was super volunteer. sketchy. It was very this sketchy. This like classic sketchy disc golf. Event. That's why it won Firefest of the Year. Is this was I in my opinion this was. Maybe the American Disc Golf Tour when that it happened. Probably back won't in the get, day. This probably won't get talked about enough. This was probably the closest thing we've had to a fire fest. Mm. Yeah, is what I'll, I'll it, say. The, at the end of the day, as long as if the pay, players got paid, which I, I'm assuming they will, we don't else, know yet. But we will hear but about they it. If get they don't. Paid. If they get paid, then it isn't ultimate fire fest because at least the players were paid correctly. Although we heard some issues about like the format situation, that maybe some players were. Pretty much, some players got screwed, <laughs> screwed over a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's it's a tough one. And yeah, you're right. Like it's so hard when the money is so significant, and like you're trying to make it on tour, and like there's not a ton of money around. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Is regarding the money, is we do have to take a look as a sport as a whole. Like this this event was a big event, but it wasn't doing anything to grow the sport as a whole. They put it behind a paywall. It was. It's like a grow Eagles Crossing mm -hmm. event. I just want to know, you know why. What I'm saying? Yeah. Why did they try to do it live? Like I get maybe they're just trying to get with the wave of live disc golf. I think they were trying to get some money. Yeah, but paper like the, the pay per view model. Maybe they just overestimated how much they thought they would sell because there's no way they sold more than a couple thousand probably. But like if it was going on live and everyone was talking about how insane this live it, broadcast so, was and then you got to the final day and you knew the final four. I, I mean, I suppose. But I'm just saying like... They, they could have... They, they in their done, head, they probably were thinking these skins matches get like 100,000 views. If we can sell 50,000 at $15 a pop, yeah. raise like, what is that? $600,000? $750,000? Yeah. They definitely could have made a lot more that way. Like that's probably what they were thinking. Yeah. but I'm They were saying, wrong, but it's probably it, what they were this thinking. This event yeah. could have gone... It didn't have to... Like live... Trying to do a live broadcast like that was such an uh, like well such also a like, bad idea. They work with the disc golf pro tour. Yeah, like, well, they, if you want to do a live, right. just do the disc golf. They could have they could have done it post produced. They could have had the players agree not to post about it until the event was. Well, that's the other thing is the reason I know who won is a player who was there in the crowd posted on their story, and on their story they were posting about Luke Humphrey's dog. But on the story, they're zooming into the dog, and you can see the one of the players holding the trophy being interviewed. That is so, <laughs> so I like this is like went on the story. I was like, oh, well, that's who won. That so, is very funny. Yeah, very funny moment. But okay, enough about the Fire Fest of the year. Congrats for winning the first ever Grippy. Um, I hope you cherish this moment forever. Player of the year. Player of the year. Uh, we'll go through FPO nominees first for player of the year. First off, we have Valerie Mandahano. Mm -hmm. Started out really, really good this season. Got had a, a few, few wins, wins and then kind of fell off a little bit. A little bit. Katrina Allen had a pretty solid season Her overall. Up and down season, yeah. but some big wins. Paige Pierce. Disappointing season, but still won a bunch. She did win a major, several pro tours. She won two majors. Two. European and. Yeah, two majors, Champions European Cup. and Champions Cup. Two majors, several wins, several big losses. And then Kristen Tatar never finished off the podium, missed two majors. Missed a good bit of the season, but lost one major, won world championship. And dominant whenever she was around. A lot of arguments can be made for each of these players. One no, but one know. stood head and shoulders above the rest, and that is Miss Kristen Tatar. Kristen Congratulations, Tatar. Kristen. Player of the year. Well deserved. The page the PDGA won't think so, but don't listen to them. You just won yourself a grippy for player of the year. Um, be yeah, checking the, your mailbox. There's going to be Grippy in there. People think we're joking. We're actually mailing Grippies out. 
We like will. players will be getting awards. And yes. all business Brad said it would happen. And if he says something's going to happen, yeah, players gonna happen. will be receiving their grippies. Um, yeah. So whether they will be displaying them, that's or up throwing to them. them immediately. Whether in they the trash. give us an address or not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we mailing them it. somewhere. Like if we have to mail this to Latitude sixty four. For Kristen, we will. Well, it, for Kristen, if she doesn't give us an address, we'll just mail it to Estonia. Just like to Estonia. And then they can figure it we out. We just pick a post office in Estonia and just mail it there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, the PDGA points-wise, Paige Pierce obviously won two majors. So if you go by just like the points, like the PDGA does, Paige Pierce is going to walk away player of the year for the PDGA, but it's just not right. Kristen Tatar was definitely the better player this year. When she was in the field, I, would, I mean, I don't even know what what her win like actual percentage ratio over Paige Pierce, but it was darn high. We know that yeah. much because she came first, second, or third every single event that she was in. Um, so Kristen Tatar, I don't think anyone's going to argue that she should be across the board player of the year. I can understand why the PDJ is giving it to Paige because Paige won two majors, but Kristen wasn't at one of the majors. So something to be said about that for sure. On the MPO side, MPO... I mean, the construction is getting louder and louder behind us. We invited them to the grippies. They, they didn't get a grippy as well. They didn't yeah. understand the invite. I invited them to come in the audience. They thought they were coming to work. Yeah. It's brutal. It's, it was kind um, of On the MPO side. The good news is this is the last unit they have to build out. That is true. After this, we should be done with. Until somebody. Until someone moves, moves or goes out of business. They, um, <laughs> <laughs> player of the year on MPO side. There's a lot of arguments to be made here. Uh, and some heated ones will probably happen in the comments. But. Mm. Uh, so I don't really our think our is. nominees for Player of the Year we have Mr. Ricky Wysocki, we have Sir Paul McBeth, Mr. Salman Lazat, and Gannon Burr. Mm. Uh, each of these players had you know multiple wins in different avenues. Gannon Burr, I believe, won a Silver Series and then the Major at USDGC. Right. Also, just had a very consistent, yeah, solid Gannon, season. Gannon's art big points are one a Major, one a Silver Series, and then had the best finishing place of anybody all year. Yeah, Simon Lazat. Average place. I mean, came four out of wins. nowhere, wins four pro tours. Including a back-to-back wins. Very difficult to do on yeah. tour. Paul McBeth, he took down a major, the world, world championship. championship. He's a six-time world champion. Mm-hmm. Won on the pro tour. And yeah, that's a big one. A few times. Um, do, you have, do you have one or two wins on the pro tour? I believe tour? he had two, but major win, world mm, title. No, I don't think he did. Okay, maybe he had two win season. Uh, I, I as think, you can tell, Paul didn't win the player of the year because we don't have our staff. I think, well, I think we were saying that if he won USDGC, <laughs> USDGC was the deciding have, factor. We right. were, it, USDGC, I think, strengthened his argument so for I player of the year. I think he only had one other win. And the final final player of the year nominee, Mr. Richard Wysocki, I think it's pretty obvious. Simon, Ricky Wysocki wins player <laughs> of the year. Uh, he just overall across the season... Uh, Simon had four wins, obviously, but Simon had more struggles. Right. Ricky also just won the tour championship. We're not really factoring. Yeah, not, not a huge factor, but it is a cherry on top. It is a cherry on top. And overall, Ricky was just, I think, is pretty obvious player of the year. We needed, like, Paul or Simon, I think, needed that USDGC title that right. Gannon got to surpass Ricky. Right. Um, it didn't happen. Uh, Ricky Wysocki, I think, is, by and large, player of the year. Also was the tour, tour points winner yeah. which i think is it, a big factor in this you as well can't, i don't see how you can argue you definitely can't argue simon because simon and ricky have the same season um minus the tour championship um right because i believe they both have four wins keep talking so i don't i don't think there's an argument they either have the same amount or ricky has one more so they, they there's no argument and neither of them had a major correct so there there's no argument and i don't think for simon versus rick I I really don't think there's one for Paul versus Rick. Because well, it just depends on if someone overweighs a you'd major. You have to because Paul, yes, he did win worlds, but that was only one of his one of two wins this year. Yeah, yeah. Ricky um, ha- Ricky's fifth win was a tour championship. Yeah. Go ahead and check double check Paul, but I'm I think if Paul had won, well, even if Paul has two, it doesn't matter in my opinion. It, I would it would be closer, but he doesn't. I yeah. Think, I, um. If Paul had won USDGC and had two majors of the four, then I would be then I would definitely hear that argument. Yeah, it's just it's just Waco. Yeah. So so Paul with only one pro tour and a major, I don't see the argument there the either. The other win I was thinking of was uh not a I don't even know if it was a pro tour. Um, it was an A tier, pretty sure. But I do think, you know, obviously there's something to be said about Ricky not winning majors. It's been since twenty seventeen since he's won a major. But that doesn't matter when you're talking player of the year. But yeah, he's still he's still dominant. I don't he had five it, wins on tour yeah. t- technically. I don't think there's like 
I think it's coincidental that he hasn't won a major. I don't think I don't think Ricky is the guy that's like, oh, he chokes in the majors. Yeah. Well, I also think the biggest point between Ricky and Simon is just Ricky was more consistent. Throughout yeah, the that's year. that's completely it. Ricky's finishing place was way it was much better. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Ricky Player of the Year. I think it it was looking like it was going to be very difficult to decide, and he kind of made it clear, and like the other players not winning down the stretch made it clear. Um. I will say that. Um. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's really a solid argument for anybody else. I think that Ricky is is by far player of the year this year. Now let's move on to most improved. We're going to start with FPO again. Our nominees for most improved FPO players, we have Valerie Mandahano, had again a, a pretty big breakout season. We talked about her and nominee for player of the year. Um, we have Ella Hansen, a player who you heard about some last year, but you definitely heard about a lot more yeah. this year on coverage. Uh, also own Scoggins, a player that's been around for a long time. But this year really was coming into form, put herself into contention several times down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, and definitely, I think, one of, if not the best putter in FPO. Also, Kat Merch. She was a player yeah. who, again, you heard about some last I, year. Yeah, I feel like Kat Merch, like last season, was not really good. And then was like a few times this year, I think Ottawa Wild was one of them where, where she was uh, in contention to win yeah. and like. Pretty consistent. I think her and Ella Hansen had like a similar trajectory. Yeah, Ella, where like you heard about them in some last year. Yeah, but it was net. It wasn't nearly as consistent. as Ella this year. was legit this year. She really blew a few opportunities. Um, she definitely could have won. I think one of the big ones was um, was it Masters Cup that she she gave away the lead down the stretch. I think it was it was Masters Cup. Did they end up? They played at a, a golf course in mm-hmm. one of the rounds. Yeah, yep. I think it was Masters Cup. Um, but there was a few times where. Ella probably should have won and gave it up, so she has to work on that, but certainly put herself certainly. up there. So, winner for the most approved FPO player this year has to go to Valerie Mandahano. Yeah. She was able to win. Uh, she also was able to kind of, in my opinion, enter that top echelon player yeah. of FPO, whereas a lot everyone else on this list was able to sneak in there here and there. Own Scoggins, by the end of the year, got in there, but Valerie Mandahano was consistently, I think, in that top tier week I- in and week out. You considered her... To be someone fighting for a win. Yeah, I think Valerie Van Hano, a big reason for this win too, is that she rose to the occasion because I think she had a label of a prospect player for a few years. Both the Van Hano sisters kind of had that like young prospect label. Um, and then like going, finally getting out to like a full tour, you know, there's expectations there. And Valerie has clearly had talent. Um, and I think she still had a, like a, a slower end to her season, but, you know, got a few wins um early on in the season towards the middle um she was undefeated in portland i remember making that graphic. yeah yeah really Silver really, series and a pro tour event really talented player needs to work on the distance that's that's like what separates her ultimately is her angle control and putting can be very good but she doesn't throw far enough to really hang with at a lot of the courses with the top players um but definitely definitely most improved um very impressive season. Yeah. Now on the MPO side, we have our nominees for most improved. First and foremost, Corey Ellis, a player who's been knocking on the door, I think, of a full tour, knocking on the door of being in contention for years. I remember talking to him several years ago, and this year he did it. He put himself in a position to win multiple times. Unfortunately, was not able to capitalize on those positions, but he was a player that, again, by the end of the season, you weren't surprised when you saw him up there. Yeah. Another player that I think was very improved this year was Gannon Burr. He was very solid last year as a 16-year-old. He really came into himself as a 17-year-old. Once he's an 18-year-old, he's probably going to be the he, Christian Jatar. He might be the best player <laughs> in the world next year. Uh, Gannon Burr, though, you know, as the year, he obviously came out, strong performance at Vegas, uh, and then just kind of like never looked back. He yeah. just consi- consistently was putting himself in contention, putting himself in contention, and then finished it off with a major championship yeah, so consistent. at the end with so USDGC. Uh, Isaac Robinson was another player that he's he's kind of like flirted with the tour a few different times. Uh, after graduating college this year, he comes out and uh, takes down Idlewild, also put himself in contention. People are forgetting some of his earlier finishes. You know, he's played pretty solid at Waco yeah. and a few other times. I think he had another top three in there. He had a very solid season overall. And uh, the final nominee for most improved is Mr. Simon Lazat. As we talked about for player of the year, he ended up with four wins on the Pro Tour after being, I believe, winless on the Pro Tour, or at least winless for a long time. Uh, he was someone who had a big question marks around him coming into the season between the injury and between the injury and becoming a new father. Yeah, no one quite knew exactly what was going on, how uh, he was going to perform this year, and then I don't even think he knew 
what he was no. capable of doing. No, yeah, he uh, he really wasn't sure what his season was even going to look like, and um, he definitely was had a, almost a lack of confidence and just like was kind of indifferent to like his touring season when I talked to him at the beginning of the year. Yeah, and so the most improved for MPO goes to Sir Simon Lazat. Well deserved, well deserved award win there for Simon. Um, I love this just one person clapping in the background. I think that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, who is that? Uh, <laughs> definitely a well deserved win there for Simon. I think when you everyone there was a lot of very improved people, but we're not looking for very improved. We're looking for the most improved, mm-hmm. and right. that's Sir Simon Lazat. Yeah, it's when you go from you know not having any big wins in a long time to a, f- a four win season, being in the conversation like Simon. You know, obviously he's been around and he has been, you know, we're not, this award isn't just for somebody who was a nobody and became a somebody. Obviously Simon's been around, but he went from a player who rarely, very rarely wins the big events. And it's just kind of like occasionally around to four win dominant season. Um, and legitimate contender for player, contender of, the for year. player of the year. You know, mm-hmm. it was definitely the most improved. Uh, he, he had a fantastic season and something to build off of for sure. Now let's go into best dressed. Uh, this award, you know, goes to who we feel was dressed the best. Yeah. So it depends Which is on what typically you, most professional best representation. I say, it depends on what you want. It depends yeah. on what you want disc golf to look like. Whether you agree with their awards or if not. If someone sees a round of disc golf and this person's in there, they'll think, "Ah, this is a sport of athletes." Yes. Good way to put it, Connor. Way to put it, Connor. Uh, we're gonna start with FPO. First and foremost, we have Miss Paige Pierce. Um, she was someone who really for years. Has always looked professional on the oh, course. Oh, yeah. She's always put together. Um, this year, we saw her get a little lax here and there. Mm. You know, some tie-dye hoodies, some louder hats than we're used to seeing with her. But, you know, overall, always put together. Missy Gannon, I think, is a player that doesn't get noticed enough yeah. for how well she dresses uh, professionally. Um, I she has do a cool think, logo, too. Yeah, she has a very cool logo. Only only knock is it's a little muted. She so wears they, all black. She blends a lot. in. She blends in sometimes yeah. with her outfits. Katrina Allen is another nominee. She's someone who I don't think you're surprised to hear her on this list. I mean, she literally changed outfits to get the award at the uh, at US or throw pink. Yeah, she uh, really changed. Outfits. She also rocks like a Dior visor throughout the year. I believe it's Dior. She wears a lot of Dior. Yeah, but she, pretty fire yeah, stuff. She's got coordinated outfits. And the final nominee is Chris and Tatar. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that she was going to be on the list. Sponsored by Nike, Estonia. Nike Estonia. Yeah. Uh, she's always so, decked out in full Nike. Yeah. And having the non brand mixing is a huge flex mm-hmm. and also helps your outfit a lot. Cause that's the one thing I will say. Kat's outfits are very coordinated, but a lot of times she'll have brands mixing mm-hmm. in her outfit. Whereas Kristen fully coordinated all Nike. Yeah. So best dressed FPO. Mm-hmm. Our first two time grippy award winner, Kristen Tatar. Wow. Takes down her second grippy of the two episode. Grippies. Dang dude. Man, yeah, pretty hard to beat when you're being sponsored by a clothing company. That does help. I'm I will checking say my it notes. Help. It makes a big difference. All right, just checking your notes. Uh, on the MPO side, uh, first off, first nominee here, Mr. Drew Gibson. I don't think yep. that's a surprise to anyone. He's no, always he's well dressed, very yeah. well dressed. Uh, you know, pack, those pack sun pants. He knows how know? to coordinate his vans with his outfit as well, which I think is important. Um, actually, several players on this list do wear vans. Mm-hmm. Mm. Something to think about. Uh, next about. up the list, it might be a surprise here. Here, Nicholas Antela. Yeah. Or Nicholas, I believe, Antela. A no hat guy. No hat guy. Always looks deal. very That's professional. That's a big deal. His hair is always well put together, yeah. too. Yeah. Mm. Which is big he for a no hat guy. He looks very sharp. He always Beginning looks very sharp. Beginning and end of the round. Yeah. Factored in there. His hair stays together. Well, hard true. to do. That wow. is hard to do. Very yeah, hard yeah. to do. I could never. Um, and, you know, he just always looks well put together. The next one on the list, he started mixing some dry fits in. Yeah. As the season went on, but when the time comes when the lights are the brightest, you can count on this guy good. looking good and pushing the sport forward in their professionalism, Mr. Paul Macbeth. Yes. Yeah. He, I think, is the reason a lot of times a lot of these players are even dressing the way that they are mm-hmm. out there on the course. And final one, we're, you know, probably slightly biased to put him on this list because of his muscles that help make all of his shirts fit better. Yeah. Uh, but Ezra Aderhold, yes. Yeah. He was very, very, very well put together out there. On cover, you're not on cover. Yeah, out there. Even you when, would just get shots of him and be like, man, even when this you guy see... still brings it from the 10th card sometimes. Well, no, mm-hmm. even when you see him, like, when he, we, like, film with him or see him off the course, yeah. he just puts together, like, he, very yeah. athletic-looking outfits yes. that look Again, clean. I think a big part of it is just the way clothes fit him. True. With how muscular <laughs> he is. Um, but I think best dressed, 
His first ever grippy goes to Ezra Aderhold for best dressed MPO player of the year. Shout out to uh, Ezra. We probably should have given it to Ezra's muscles because I do think that plays I, a lot. I do Honestly, think it's Ezra's though, like muscles. that. As far as looking professional, like an athlete, like Connor mentioned, that's part of that it. That is part of it. Being in really yeah, good shape. That is part of it. You know, that if you, dude if makes you look at disc golf, and, leggings. yeah, if you look at <laughs> if you look at disc golf and you see guys that are in tremendous shape, it looks good for the sport. It does because it they shows they take it seriously. He he is an athlete for sure. We're gonna take a break here to tell you thanks to today's sponsor. When we come back, we have some of our. Some of the best awards are still yet to come, so you're not going to miss it. We'll be right back. Today's episode is sponsored by True Classic. This brand makes t-shirts that actually fit, not to mention they're super soft. When you're jacked like Ezra, finding the right t-shirt can be incredibly frustrating. Most t-shirts are too tight and all the wrong places are way too big and boxy, but not True Classic. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men get their fit on at an affordable price. Our listeners, I mean, they, that dude's on a rhythm back there. Uh, our listeners get access to the absolute best deal that they offer for a limited time. Get 25% off with the code GRIPLOCKED over at trueclassic.com. You need True Classic. Their tees are snug around the arms and chest to make your muscles pop and looser in the torso pop. for or added lack comfort. Or muscles. Yeah, they're also looser in the torso for like when you got a little gut sticking out. Mm-hmm. Hides it real well. Trust me on that one. Mm-hmm. True Classic clothing is made for with every man in mind. You'll get that quality, luxe fit, and the softness you've always wanted, but never receive from those sandpaper excuses for freaking t-shirts. These things are soft. You'll actually want to wear them. True Classic also doesn't stop at tees. They're your one-stop shop for all things menswear, and they make it super easy to build out your wardrobe from polos and workout shirts with the same flattering fit to boxer briefs designed with a pouch to keep that package nice and comfortable. All their clothing is comfortable, long-lasting, and affordable. I've been rocking the heck out of True Classic shorts in the recent weeks, maybe even a month now. I gotta try this out. They're incredible. Absolutely love them. Uh, they're flexy, so they like fit with you with active, like if you're playing disc golf or just working out. They're still like moisture wicking, but they have that similar soft feel that the t-shirts have. Extremely comfortable. Yeah, I mean, I, you, I wouldn't be surprised if Ezra wasn't that in shape. He was just wearing wearing true, true classic. That's probably what it is. That, that is. could be it. That is. What we it should is. have definitely made it the true classic best dress award. A little too we late. Still for that. Can. We still can. We still right can. Right now, it just we it's just officially did. the true classic best dress award, and it officially went to Ezra Aderhold. It's about time you get your fit together. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic and get twenty five percent off at trueclassic.com with the code Grip Locked. Free shipping's included on purchases over a hundred dollars. That's twenty five percent off at trueclassic.com with the code Grip Locked. Strengthen your core wardrobe with True Classic today. True Classic. Look good. Feel good. Throw good. We're back uh, with you know a pretty heavily debated about award. Mm. Oh, here. okay. Here we go. I know everyone's nervous in the studio it's for this the one. Pulitzer I'm award. nervous. The, I the podcast. Feel, I can feel the live audience but of just the year. Beyond this oh, wall, shoot. they're all really nervous. Oh. Podcast of the year. Oh, I'm nervous. Man. Oh, goodness. Boy, we were nominated. No. Nominees for podcast of the year. Stop. We have Grip Locked. Oh, my God. Okay. We also have the In the Bag podcast with Robbie C. and Brad Jones. That's wow. going to be tough. Mm-hmm. We have Debate Night with Brody Smith that and Hunter Thomas. Yeah. Easy out. Yeah, and we have the Trevor Staub <laughs> show with Trevor Staub also and an Burt Kreischer. That one's, I easy mean, out. best looking of the three of the however many we said. <laughs> have you seen Brad lately? Let me get my You're envelope. right, actually. Yeah. Let's podcast not, of the year. Let's not, let's not kid okay, ourselves. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Honorable mention, Plastic Addicts. Yes. <laughs> that show doesn't exist anymore. They, they actually received the most votes, but we had to get rid of it because oh, it got canceled. Dang it. And the podcast of the year goes to Grip Lock. Yes. We're grippy winners, boys. Yes. Come on. Come on. That hurt. Let's go, Connor. Nice. Do you Grippies. think the construction guys over there are like... I actually already have mine. They're like, man, they're making so much noise. We're trying actually, to do construction. I already have mine right here. Thanks, this man. is a big moment. Thanks, podcast man. of the year. That's a really big podcast of the year, man. We wow, we really, finally did it. We finally did it. We can officially call ourselves the number one podcast in disc golf. We've been working on we this want for a almost a decade now. We it want has. a grippy. If you think about it, emotionally, we're the yeah. number one podcast in disc golf. I've been prepping for a long no time. No other podcast is one a grippy. That is something crazy. to think about. That is something to think about. All we right, have, we have that's gonna be really fun to reply to people on Twitter if they're like, "You guys are not even a good contest." Like, but has any other or podcast has any other podcast won a grippy though? And yeah, they're, like, just gonna like, gonna they're just gonna be like, it, it "What are you talking to know, about?" It is good to know that now officially My hand we are is broken. <laughs> that's a solid high five. <laughs> it is good to know that we are now officially the number one. Well, we're officially Discord. an award. How are you podcast? gonna? Well, how are you gonna yeah. argue it? Yeah. What other what awards? Yeah. Yeah. Other I'm, I'm gonna change want? our. I'll change your Twitter bio after this. An award winning podcast. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a lie. All right. We got to calm down. I know it was a big moment for us, but we still got a show to host here. I already peed my pants. (laughs) Breakout player of the year. (laughs) This is a big one here. Uh, Not most improved, 
this is kind of like, to be completely honest with you, it's semi rookie of the year esque for us. Yeah. Because rookie of the year is tough in the current disc golf era because so many players like test out a tour before they fully send it. Right. And so you'll have players who have like flirted with the tour a little bit, played a few events here and there. So they're not real tour rookies, but then they fully do it. And it's like they feel like a rookie of the, the year. The big difference between this one and most improved is most improved, your status did not matter like going into this season. For breakout player, we wanted players who were a little more under the radar mm. going into the season. Okay. All right. Nominees for FPO breakout player of the year. First off, we have Emily Beach. The lefty. A player yeah. who could have won this year. Could have won. I was a D-Glow. I believe it was D-Glow. That, I think so. Uh, but I remember. She last year, like I, I think I'd heard her name maybe once. Yeah. But this year, I feel like there were several times she was on chase card, lead card, least like in the mix. So pay attention to her. She could be most improved next year. Uh, if we could pay attention be. I'm there. paying attention. Another <laughs> breakout player of the year was Valerie Mandahano. She was a player that uh, was expected to do good this year, but I don't think she was expected to do as good as she did. Right. And also, there was some other players that were expected to do good <laughs> um, and then just didn't <laughs> end up performing. And having a player who's expected to do good and did it, there's something to be said about it. It's like, a, and for dynamic, especially. It's, yeah, yeah. If it's, just for example. Yeah, no, I appreciate the example. Thank you. Um, <laughs> another player, breakout, breakout season for them was Owen Scoggins. Again, she's been around disc golf, around FPO division for a while. But this was, I think, the first year. She's a household year, name now. Yeah, this was the first year that she's really, wall, she wasn't around. She was in front, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Like, she wasn't just, like, in yeah. in the FPO field. Sometimes she was the FPO field, it felt mm. like. She was banging yeah. putts from all over the place. Yeah, very good player. And the final breakout player of the year nominee is Holland Handley, a player who I'm trying to think if I knew her name last year. I didn't. I, heard, I had heard her name, like, maybe once or twice last year as, like, a oh, she's one for the future maybe because I believe she was a player who had not been playing disc golf for long. And all, is she an ultimate background? I think she might, have an, she might have an ultimate background. But Who's the FPL player that's like powerlifting background? I do not know. Is that Holland? It uh, might be Holland Handley. Brody says it's Holland. Brody says it's Holland. Uh, no, she is an ultimate oh, background. Ella has an ultimate background. Breakout player of the year, FPO, uh, goes to Holland Handley. Mainly, mainly, like Trevor was saying, I think you got to think about the status coming into the year. Oh, I'm thinking about it. I think a lot, the other three nominees, I think the biggest argument could be made for Emily Beach, but I think she didn't have quite as good a season as Holland right. Handley. Owen Scoggins, Valerie Mandahano. They were a little more relevant going Not into quite a, as surprising. Right. Holland Handley, just several times that she was in contention on lead card, in the mix, talked about on live coverage a lot, that last year just was not the case. Yeah. Breakout so Holland season. Hanley, breakout season, breakout player of the year. Let's talk MPO now. MPO whew, is a tough award here. Mm-hmm. Let me let me read you this list of nominees. First off, Nicholas Antela. <clears throat> yep, he broke out. He was a player, European Finnish champion. Uh, he was a player who we heard about, you know, years prior across the pond, if you will. Yeah. But this was our first time really seeing him here a lot, and he didn't disappoint. He put himself in contention at events such as United States Disc Golf Championship. Could have won. Uh, and stuff like that. Also, Alden Harris. Yeah. A player who many people hadn't heard about. Toured this year. Won the Mid-America Open. Yeah. Uh, and was in the mix several times. He's a part of that young prodigy crop. Yeah. That they just look like a bunch Super of killers squad. coming up first uh, soon. Also, I think we could nominate his vlogs for breakout vlogs mm-hmm. of the year. Because they're funny. That honestly helps. It helps does help. It, helps it does relevance. help name recommend- recognition. Uh, another breakout player this year, Isaac Robinson. Again, he had been in, he'd played previous seasons some. He'd you know flirted with the tour, comes out wins Ida Wild. We talked about him for potential for most improved, I believe it was, where he had a few top fives, top three finishes. Could have won the tour um, championship. Could have won the tour championship as well. Took down Ida Wild though. And the final breakout player of the year nominee is Corey Ellis. Had two really good shots at winning at MVP and at Deglo. Um, unfortunately was unable to do either of those, but he was a player that multiple times looked very dangerous this year. Multiple times looked very dangerous. Uh, throws the disc very well, putts insanely well. Same thing with Isaac Robinson. So as you can tell, this list, there's a lot of arguments to be made for each person, but the MPO breakout player of the year taking home their first ever grippy, Isaac Robinson. 
Yeah, Isaac. The thing that separated him from this field is the Pro Tour win. Yeah. Alden Harris had a Silver Series win. They all had like some moments they were in the mix, whether it be at majors or at Pro Tour events. They all had really solid finishes, but Isaac Robinson was able to do it when it mattered the most at Idlewild, and he was able to do it in a fashion that made him look like he might never be touched. Mm-hmm. Very uh, good fashion, incredible. that one. Yeah, he was very, very good, fashion. good fashion. All right. And the next award, we don't have nominees. Okay. We're just giving out the award for the best shot of the year for FPO and MPO. Can't all right. wait. The best shot of the year for FPO, I think, has to go to Holland Hanley's eagle throw-in. Uh, I believe it made Sports Center, if I'm not mistaken. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, crush. It, massive hyzer. Massive. Yeah, it was a beautiful shot. If you you've seen it, I don't have to say. You you've seen, seen it. it. It's on the Pro Tour's Instagram. Now, honorable mention: Page Shoe, Hole 17, USCGC. Sure. Or awesome. sorry, Throw Pink. Sure. Throw Pink. Same uh, thing. No, well, major in our hearts. A major in our hearts. USCGC, major in our hearts. United States Disc Golf Championship. Yeah, you're right. Um, best shot for MPO. There were several here that could have went here. Yeah. But it ends up going to... Actually, I'm going to make Trevor read it. Um, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> this one goes to Hunter's Tilt Ace, Hole 20, Falling Creek Park. Yes! Bedford, Virginia. I I'm know a two-time him. grippy winner. Listen, Dang, man. I joined a short list you, of people who have won was, two freaking grippy. <laughs> there was not that many shots that really stood out this year, except for that Tilt well, Ace. Well, the nominees, though, I How mean, we tilt? did have Trevor's Ace, Hole 2, the first mm-hmm. one on our channel, Lynchburg College. There wasn't nominees for That's these true. awards. Remember? No, but I'm saying like that. These are honorable mentions. You know? Okay. That, that was one, honorable. That uh, mention was honorable. My Sonic Thank you for Ace. Your Yep. Another honorable mention. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I mean... Guys on tours didn't do anything cool. Yeah, so uh, yeah, my tilt ace see. takes home the grippy for best mm-hmm. shot of the year. It was yep. also, reminder, it was for the win. I had to walk off. That's true. Ace. You got to yep. keep the yep. context in mind. A little, little bit of reminder there. Um, the next grippy is the best performance. This one's going to be tough. Our FPO nominees. Okay. We have Chris and Tatar's performance at GMC. Mm. Chris and Tatar's performance at Jonesboro. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's a good Dang, one. Yeah, those won are by a lot be, of strokes. Yeah. Chris and Tatar's performance at Worlds. Not even close. He won by a bunch. Or Chris and Tatar's entire season. Ooh. Very, I mean, there's arguments to be made for one. each one of these players. It's like, because like, on one hand, you have Kristen Tatar. But yeah. then on the other hand, you've got Kristen Tatar. Yeah, no, I understand. And on the third hand, you've got you three hands. Kristen Tatar. <laughs> Kristen Tater. <laughs> and the grippy for best performance goes to Kristen Tatar's entire season. Wow. She just couldn't be touched. I, she earned it. She earned it. She, she couldn't be touched. It. She was, I mean, couldn't. it was, uh, I, leave your arguments for the other nominees in the comments down below. But Kristen Tatar was a close second. She did. Yeah. No, there, there's arguments to be made for Kristen. Close. There's definitely arguments to be made for Kristen, but it's also at the same time hard to argue against Kristen. Yeah. So it's got to be Kristen when it's all said and done. I want to like yell at Connor and be like, what do you mean? Like, how can it not be Kristen? Why yeah. would you say it's Kristen? Yeah, it's uh, Kristen Tatar's entire season, best performance this year. I think that actually should win the overall grippy, MPO or FPO. Kristen Tatar's entire season. Mm. But we're going to give one MPO. MPO, our nominees go to Simon Lazat's OTB Open win. That okay. was one heck of a moment. Yeah. yeah when Simon won. That was, you know, he ran around saying, I don't know if I'll get to do it again. Spoiler alert, he did it three more times. Dang. But that was quite the moment. Goat. Uh, next up, we had Isaac Robinson taking down Ida Wild. And again, incredible performance. Insane. His putting, it seemed like his putting was like he was putting into a very large basket. A very large basket. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen those, that is those a cone great baskets analogy. that just knock the disc downwards, but it's a solid cone? Yeah. This like hard, it's like he was putting. putting into one of those, but it was the size of a water tower. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we also have Gannon Burr's performance at USDGC, especially down the stretch. That Very impressive good. performance. That putt on 17 yeah, was, was unreal. And then insane. the final nominee is Eagle McMahon's European Open performance. Him mm-hmm. and Paul Macbeth absolutely, absolutely ran away from that event. That was crazy. But they had each other to battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was one of the most electric events of the season. So these are all, I mean, you go to any one of them. And any one of them, there could be arguments for. But I think the best performance of the year has to go to... <laughs> best performance of the year has to go to Eagle McMahon at the European Open. If you're wondering what we're laughing about, Silas... No, it was not no. Silas. It was Brody, Brody trying to shake an apple, pie. an apple pie right now. That wasn't what I was looking at. I, I just saw Silas pop through like the Looney Tunes freaking... Uh, it was a lot going scene. on. 
There is. There is some hey, we're all just really chaos. excited. That I don't even know who won. <laughs> who won. Who won? Who e- won? I wasn't Eagle paying McMahon, attention. Eagle McMahon. Open. Eagle McMahon. You're we're all so excited about it. <laughs> Congratulations on your grippy eagle. I would say, and a big thing to be mentioned with the eagle performance is that he would just popped in from injury real quick. Well, we also after have to his shoulder popped out. Mm-hmm. If Paul did not play. Or did not play as well. He would have won by a Eagle lot. would have won probably by like 15, 16 shirts. It was insane. It was Eagle, the, the golf that was put on display by Eagle and Paul was unreal. If Eagle ha- if Paul had won the event, probably would have went to Paul, best performance European Open. Because the European Open was just one heck of a show. We the disc given, golf that was played there was a higher level than anywhere else all season long. We should have given a Facts. grippy to Eagle's shoulder injury about the fake out backhand. For what? For what? Just, you know, because it was funny. <laughs> Oh, you found oh, that funny? funny? Yeah, dude. yeah. I think it's funny the way that he the way that he hurt his shoulder was funny. Yes. Okay. Okay, man. Wow. I do not feel bad for that. It was a silly thing to do. We'll just let the well, comments. Okay, we'll let the comments. Scene, comments that's that totally one. fine. I feel like our comment when we like direct people to the comment section, it's like when we uh, it's like in the Batman where in the third one where the guy's at the top of the tire and he's just asking people if they want uh, death or exile and both of them are death. That's basically when we sentence somebody to the comment section. Yeah. Death or exile, but they're both actually just death. <laughs> Niche reference. Clutch. Not really, though. <laughs> it's a popular movie. Clutch moment of the year is the next I think grippy. I just got sentenced. The next grippy is clutch moment of the year. The FPO nominees. We have Paige Pierce at Champions Cup coming down the stretch, being able to hold on for that title. We have Haley King, USWDGC, having to make par on the final hole to take <laughs> home. <laughs> it, so- it doesn't sound a clutch, but when you watched it, it was clutch. Okay, let's all calm down. Uh, she was able to win a major. <laughs> Haley King won a major. It was clutch. Why are you laughing? She could win the grippy. Natalie Ryan, the approach at the MVP Open on hole 18. Uh, very clutch shot to take down an MVP Open title. And Valerie Mandahano on hole 17 at the Waco Annual Charity Open. People forget about that too soon. The, like, the shot was insane. Slip up, turnover. I think it was with her getaway. On that little peninsula. Onto that peninsula. Thing. And the clutch moment of the year for FPO goes to... Valerie Mandahano, hole 17 at Waco. That shot was that insane. That shot was insane. That shot was insane. If you forgot about it, go back and rewatch it because you forgot about it and you shouldn't have. Mm. It was insane. Well that, said. that hole was very well difficult. Said. There's wind. She threw it perfect. Yeah, and it locked it up for her. Yeah, that was a crazy good shot. Now, clutch moment of the year for MPO nominees. We have Eagle McMahon, the event to win the All-Star or the, the putt, putt to win the All Star event. Probably one of the sickest putts I've ever seen. Yeah, in my you, life. You, people like forget an, about that thing. It's like an mm-hmm. air bounce. It was pretty insane. Insane. Uh, we have Ricky Wysocki's Tour Championship back to back birdies on hole 18 to get into the playoff and then to win the playoff. Thirty five thousand dollars. Crazy. Very cool. Gannon Burr's putt on hole 17 at the United yes. States Disc Golf Championship. Uh, <laughs> a lot of pressure on that putt. Nicholas was closer and he big putted him. With hole 17. Big putted him. They put and the absolute heck out of him. The final nominee for Clutch Moment of the Year is Paul McBeth at the World Championships. Both mm. his upshot and putt on 17, his upshot on 18, and then taking it down to the playoff. Yeah, realistically, it's that up and down on 17 was just like, it's stupid. Yeah, that's probably the actual moment, but we're just going to give the World Championships is the nominee, if that makes sense. Mm. So Clutch Moment of the Year goes to Paul McBeth at the World Championships. Good job. Yeah, much very well deserved. That was pretty, pretty insane, uh, incredible performance, and it made our tr- our companion stream very electric. So. Clutch too because he was in that drought. Yeah, yeah. It, it put him in it, without the world championship title. He's not even nominated for player of the year. Without the world close. championship title, that season was rough. Yeah, but he does what Paul does. He, he wins something to make you go. Well, he did have that. It's true. Just like last year with USDGC. All right, and the final grippy. Of the 2022 season, the biggest choke. Mm. I love that we Ooh. saved that one for last. That was not intentional. We kind of choked by doing that. Yeah. Probably should have gotten like player of the year as our last awards in the second. <laughs> you know, we'll no, be better we, next year. It'll make people wait, man. Yeah. We, we like the biggest give, choke. Yeah. People want to hear this. Yeah. We'll start with the FPO, the biggest choke. I mean, I'd be FPO. excited to hear about this award more than any other one, I feel like. The biggest yeah. choke in FPO, the final grippy going out. We have Evelina Solon at the European Open. Mm. Blew what I believe I rem- was a seven stroke lead across two rounds. I lost five strokes round three, five strokes round four to Paige Pierce and lost the major. It's brutal. We have Hannah Blommers at the MVP Open. Some putting woes. Tough to say it cost her the tournament, but it cost her the tournament. She was in it and then like tripped five on putt. that rock while she was five putting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Um, 
Sarah Hokum laying up at the tour championship <laughs> when she needed to run the putt. It's tough to it's tough to say that she would have made the putt and got in. She could have tried. Or she though. could have tried. <laughs> yep. Um. So that's more of her brain choking than her choking. Mm-hmm. But yeah, brain choke. And we have Chris and Tatar at the Champions Cup. She had the major on lock coming down the stretch. Choked it away. Putt handed for the it to win. To putt for the playoff. To loss. Mm. Three putts. And the biggest choke of the year. Winning her third grippy. Not the grippy you want to win, but Kristen Tatar Champions Cup. Grippy all the same, though. Yeah. Grippy all the, all the way. The first ever. You think she'll just play that one? I don't know. First I, time, three time grippy winner. First ever. Uh, yeah, congrats, Kristen. Um, bright side, she still came in second at the event. So and you won player of the year. And still won player of the year. Still won best performance. But that was tough. And got three grippy. But that, that one tough. was tough. That, that one, was tough. You know, and part of it could be. Attributed back to the f- almost fire was fest of the year of Elaine, Elaine King's King. rule call on Kristen Tatar's daughter. Didn't mm-hmm. help. Something to, be thinking, something to think help. about there. Something to think about. All right, on the MPO side. Just something to think about. You nominees, cannot bogey that hole. <laughs> nominees for biggest choke on the MPO side. We have Corey Ellis at the MVP Open. Through that zone to Mars. Yeah. Had the upshot. <laughs> <laughs> had the upshot. That baseline zone win. was out of the frame of the camera so fast. We have Gannon Burr at Las Vegas. He made it to a playoff, but if you remember correctly... He had an upshot to, to win. not be in the playoffs. Just had to get up and down. Mm. Couldn't do it. Paul McBeth at Jonesboro. Mm. Slip on that tee pad. That shot was trash. The shot did not go anywhere close to according to plan. And everyone played on the tee pad all weekend. Double G. Portland Open. The forehand heard around the world. Similar mm. similar to Coriolis at MVP. Absolutely yanked that thing over. Similar, similar to Coriolis MVP. Yeah. Similar situation. And the biggest choke award, a one-time grippy winner, Mr. Garrett Gerthy at the Portland Open. That was brutal. That was. Because, like, Simon even threw it out of bounds. You just had and to get up and down. Yeah. All you got to do is get up and down. Then do it. There it is. That is the 2022 Grippy Awards. Woo! Each winner will be contacted and will be receiving a grippy. Um, Legitimately. Huge shout out to each and every one of you for making this such a great season. If you're listening to this podcast, that means we're about to head to the off-season grip locked, which means that you're about to start enjoying these episodes so much more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You probably enjoyed them during the season, but off-season grip locked, there's just nothing like it's it. It's a different breed. There's nothing like it's it. Different so, breed. It's bread um, different. We really appreciate Whole you wheat. all tuning yeah, in like for the sour, 2022 sour season. Dough. Remember, uh, be thinking about grippies in the 2023 season. You know, if you're a player, them. something to think about. You know? Yeah. As you're playing, mm-hmm. be like, hey, don't mess this up. I could be the biggest choke of the year. That's true, and you don't want to. And be you that. don't want to be that, but you do want a grippy though. But you do want a grippy, so you could also be thinking, "Man, I could just mess this up, easily be, be the biggest choke of the year, and get my first grippy." That's true. So you do get a grippy. We'll be back here same time, same place next week with the kickoff of the off season. We're gonna have off season player sponsorship trackers. We're gonna bring back Shark Tank. People loved it. Clock oh, shirt, yes. remember that. I remember that. Bedtime yeah, basket. Bedtime basket. Some great ideas in there. Clock shirt. We're going to bring back uh, In the Bag. We now have a podcast called In the Bag, but if you remember In the Bag, it was originally on this podcast, and it's going to be back. If you don't it's know back. what it is, you're going to have to tune in. Uh, and there's some new segments that you're just not going to want to miss out on that we're going to have all sprinkled out throughout the offseason. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of disc golf drama this offseason. It seems like there always is. There's a lot of players whose contracts are running up. We'll update you on that and next week. we are TMZ. Week. And yeah, we do have to report on all the disc golf drama that happens. It's in our contract with Ricky. We'll see you next year. Nope, next week. <laughs>